Howdy and welcome to Play Game Spread Joy. I'm Justin. Today I'm going to be unboxing Under Falling Skies. This is a Czech Games Edition game that's a solo only game that plays in about 20 to 40 minutes um, for ages 12 and up per the box. I've heard some great things about this game. I was able to pick, pick up a copy for myself, excited to unbox it and then learn it at some point soon as well. Uh, but let's get into it. Let's get this opened up. Still in plastic wrap, so I've never seen this on the table. Never played it, so the only thing I know about it is it's supposed to be uh, really enjoyable, almost the Space Invaders vibe uh, to how it plays. So that should be interesting to find out about. Uh, so opening up the box, we have a right on top. Wait, stop, do not dump out everything in this box. The game has been carefully packed with four chapter campaigns at the bottom. Okay, interesting to know that. So I may or may not be unboxing everything then. Um, it says remove the starting components at the top and leave the campaign in the box for now. So we'll kind of go step by step and try to leave certain things in the box that we're not supposed to show off because they're campaign based. I don't want to ruin the surprise for myself or for you, of course, watching. So let's see what we can take out. So starting components, it looks like um, we're going to have the some plastic components in there, a little pamphlet, uh, not actually for the game, but it just talks about a lot of the Czech Games Edition games. We can set that aside, look through them, learn about some more of their games later. Looks like we've got some dice, uh, some extra Ziploc bags, always handy to have those. Uh, looks like a couple of uh, boards that's actually from a punch board, but they are uh, super loose already coming out of that as well. So there's uh, three pieces, one punch board so far. Let's see, another one, same thing, one, two, three, and that. Uh, these are a little tight. Uh, be careful punching these, some of them falling out, some of them not, because they shared a cut line, it looks like. There's bigger ones. So you can see that more here with this one that has not started to come out yet. So you can see it's actually a bifold punch board, shared cut line right there. So that that those pieces right there are falling pretty easily. This bottom one takes a little bit of extra effort. Uh, looks like they've done everything they can to minimize waste on these boards. These are uh, pretty much the uh, bare minimum remaining around the edges that I've seen for most boards. Got another punch right there, and then this top one. All of those punched very easily. It seemed like almost no risk of tear. Uh, Double-sided printing on some of these, it looks like. We'll get into those components in a moment. And it looks like, and then this right here, some kind of score sheet, potentially, or for campaign mode which looks like that is the first component of the campaign stuff. And it does look like this has the little sleeve around it. So I don't want to get into that too much right now. I'll look at the base components for the rule book first, and then we can decide if there's anything else we need to look at. I'm going to set that aside right now. Put that out of the way. Uh, there's our score sheet. I'll put that right back on top. It looks like that's for campaign mode. And then we'll take a quick look at all these punched components. A couple different sizes. Uh, we have this, looks like this piece. Looks like it goes, you can't tell which direction it goes yet. We'll figure it out. But on the back, uh, it has some, looks like it talks about a dice phase, rooms phase, mothership phase. And then we got three of these. I don't know if they're all used in a game. Zero, one, two, three, four. Uh, so potentially, uh, variations on how you set up the game because it looks like the side of it's about the same uh, with the numbers uh, potentially based on round uh, with different setup on these so I, I would think there's different ways to set up your your game and then uh, different numbers on the back so potentially use one front one bottom line them up and then it looks like it you're progressing through it in some way and then these it looks like okay so these are also double-sided but also it looks like variations yep different on each side a two dark sides on that one 
Well, of course, not knowing what any of these symbols mean yet, um, it's hard to say what those all mean. It looks like we got a couple different cities on these as well. We got a DC, a little uh, outline of some of the buildings, uh, Roswell, New York. Let's see what's on the back. We got, oh, it looks like it's red instead of blue. Same general idea, uh, but this time we have uh, the red background smoke and then the artwork is slightly color changed as well. So let's see what the, the rule book says about all these components. So now we can turn that over. So the rule book was just upside down when we first opened it. it. Looks like it has a QR code to a tutorial video, which is great. A lot more rule books are starting to do this uh, because there's a lot of uh, tutorial videos out there people are making, the companies are making them now, making it easy, easier for us to learn the games up front, especially when you have a solo game. It's harder to go over to a friend's house or and to go learn it while playing with someone. So learning a solo game can be more difficult occasionally. And so having a video to go check out uh, to guide you along if you have questions that are not answered in the rule book is always helpful. So I do appreciate that option. Uh, it looks like there's a little bit of information about the game, uh, kind of stating what the game is about, the general theme. And then we get into uh, first page, straight in, we go, we see the setup. Uh, kind of almost like it was stacked in the box, the general pieces you should have seen, and saying, hey, leave the campaign chapters in the box until you're ready to start the campaign. Uh, it kind of gives you a packing diagram in general, which is nice as well uh, for resetting the box or uh, uh, giving it to someone else so they can play or just make it easier to put away in general is always nice. Uh, it looks like a nice large pictorial view of how you're setting up the game board, all those boards together, and uh, kind of what those tile names are as well. So it's kind of a dual, here's setup and here's components at the same time, teaching you a very nicely laid out, easy to read. Uh, hey, here's the dice, here's what they mean, and here's the ones you need for the game. And then it goes into gameplay, the dice phase, is, dice phase it looks like, uh, some different pictures along the way, broken up pretty easily to read, which I like. It's not just giant chunks of paragraphs. Uh, it looks like there's a room phase. Uh, some decent paragraphs, but decent pictures right next to them, showing what, that, what they mean. A next phase is mothership phase, it looks like. And then end of game, uh, whether you win or, or you lose. And you can stop reading here and play your first game. So there's very few pages to learn actually how to play and set up. As you can see, uh, it goes into decent detail, but it's not extreme and that's going to take forever to learn, especially if it's a 20 to 40 minute game. Uh, you don't want there to be an extensive rule set to have to learn. And it looks like after that, uh, after that first game, keep reading. Looks like there's a full game. Uh, talking about threat level cities, uh, damaging the cities, uh, robots standalone game. Uh, so it's saying you now know how, how to play the standalone game and then if you continue you can then shift to campaign and it looks like there's almost a uh, kind of graphic novel comic style uh, page to this which almost, it also looks like that first part uh, inside the box it had kind of a the same artwork style uh, campaign it kind of talks you through the chapters and choosing what you're going to play the scenarios and how that integrates into the game uh, how you start a campaign and how you take notes about it uh, save components remove them uh, and then spicing up a standalone game if you're not going to play a, a full campaign but you want a little bit more to your standard game and then of course uh, more information on uh, at their website you can visit as well and so let's take a quick look at these dice. So these appear to be some pretty standard wooden dice. It trying to feel, it does feel like these are uh, slightly engraved or indented for the pips and then, and then paint filled. This is not screen print. This is actually, uh, you can tell there's uh, removed material with each pip as you feel that. Uh, got a couple of white, three gray, and two blue, all in the same style. Uh, very heavily rounded corners, but these are uh, always, this style of dice always rolls well, pretty easily. Not too loud on a table if you don't have a mat like I do. So definitely not a bad uh, set of dice. Then we got a 
almost space tractor or something else. I, I can't tell what this component is without going back into the book to see what they name it. Kind of has some wheels on it, uh, kind of energy style symbol on it. Probably moves it along your track or something like that. So not terrible at all. Uh, definitely unique. So now I'm going to grab the plastic ships and stuff that came with it. These. So this is kind of an, an, a simple lightweight plastic, uh, but it looks like there's some custom shaped ships right here. Several different colors. So we got one of these orange ones. A lot of almost sharp edges on them for that custom shape. Uh, very makes it very foreboding uh, alien invasion ship style. And we got four clear ones and then five of these kind of reddish almost pink style ones. Appears they're all the same shape for all of those though. We got one of these uh, red cubes and then two uh, rounded discs, yellow and green for tracking different stuff as you play. Put those back in the bags. I'm debating if I want to check out the campaign stuff. You know what, let's open and just look at the first campaign stuff and hopefully it's, it's not like extreme spoiler of any type if we look at it. Uh, so there's the campaign booklet where you can keep track of things. And it looks like and uh, you can do the campaign multiple times it appears so it does repeat some of the pages so that's nice. So I'm just going to take this top one off um, we'll kind of check out what it does, um, there's more in here. We try not to reveal too much uh, so you can experience the campaign for yourself. So that is, it has this paper sleeve across it to hold it all together. Uh, like I said, that kind of graphic novel, comic layout. It has, a, a, looks like a front page of that, a little bit of words, not too much, almost setting up a story and then uh, you would read the actual story. So it's a cha the chapter for the story. It tells you how to set up the base it looks like, uh, the components you're using, and uh, the cities as well. It looks like there's, um, let's see, three punch boards. So uh, some character pieces, uh, the actual cities you're using. Looks like almost like a graphic a novel, novel style punch board piece as well. So, and then on this back one, there we go, slid that out. Has some more pieces to punch from additional components for the story. And let's see if we open this up because the way they've done the punch boards is a bifold style piece. Looks like some more cities, some more uh, places to uh, read the graphic novel story that they've set up. So I'm not going to punch these yet just because uh, that's the, the story, the campaign, that I don't want to uh, break apart too much. Uh, so that's probably what some of these extra bags are for, all those extra components you punch out from the, the graphic stuff you're reading to the characters. So I'll, I'll make sure I'm saving those until I punch this the first time. Um, but I should be able to slide this paper back over it for now and save this campaign for when I officially play it. There we go. Get myself started. Uh, but yeah, so pretty straightforward components. Um, some nice, decent punch boards without risk of tearing too much. At least from my what I did punch, they were pretty easy to punch out. Nice double-sided printing nice very vibrant colors on everything and then some nice custom plastic ships and dice uh, some wooden dice as well so overall i'm interested in, in actually playing this game and experiencing the campaign itself there we go should slide back in and then i can pack it away and it looks like it should all fit in here uh, pretty tightly at least um, so you're not there's not a, a lot of wasted space or air in this box 
like some games, you know, the box is kind of pretty much just the right size for it, of course. Uh, not so tight that you can't figure out how to put it away without issue. I see if these still, yep, those are still fine. I don't have to restack any of that. I can press, should have pressed that in earlier, but not a problem. Put that in and close it up. So again, this was Under Falling Skies from Czech Games Edition. It is a solo only game. It says it plays in about 20 to 40 minutes and it is for ages 12 and up. So uh, thank you for joining me today, uh, watching along as I open this up. And I hope you get a chance to learn more about this game. Try it out for yourself. If you're interested, I'll put some links below to their website or other places you can pick up the game. And as always, play games and spread joy.